Hello, let's talk about travel credit cards. More specifically, cards that don't have an annual fee. The world is opening back up again, people are starting to travel, and why wouldn't you wanna get rewarded for traveling? No hate to other creators on the platform here, but I was looking at some other videos on travel credit cards, and I was surprised at the number of creators that were suggesting 10 or 15 different credit cards. You don't need that many cards. My head was exploding, there were so many options. We need a more simplified list, so I'm gonna give that to you. So, let's get into it. The first thing that you'll want to do is figure out if you want a card that's specifically for traveling or if you want a card that's more versatile that has more rewards. So there's credit cards that you can use exclusively for airlines and hotels or there's cards that offer cash back or rewards points that can be redeemed for travel or other things. To help you figure that out, there's some questions that you're gonna wanna ask yourself. So the first is, am I going to fly the same airline or try to fly the same airline every time I travel? The second question, if you're staying in hotels, are you planning on staying at the same hotel chain or trying to stay within the same hotel chain every time you travel? And then the third question is much more generic, but it's what are you hoping to get out of your card? Are you planning on just using it for hotel stays or for flights? or do you hope to use your card for other things? Once you've answered those questions, it's time to pick out a card. So let me show you some of my favorites. So we're going to start out here with the airline credit cards. I have a few that are pulled up here, but if you're anything like I was when I first started traveling, I was traveling on Spirit, Frontier, United, JetBlue, Delta. I was all over the place, so I decided I wanted a travel credit card and the choices were so daunting and I had no idea where to start. So a couple tips that really helped me to narrow it down is I took a look at my home airport and then took a look at places that I wanted to travel or places that I was already frequently traveling and then took a look at who had the most flights and the most convenient flights. And for me, that happened to be the JetBlue card. This card has everything that I need. It checked all of my boxes when I was looking at my home airport as well as some of the surrounding airports in the area. JetBlue had the most flights and the most convenient flights for the places that I want to travel to and where I'm currently traveling. So a couple of differences between this card, there's also the JetBlue Plus card, which does have a $99 annual fee. This card, you'll earn three times the points on JetBlue purchases. With the JetBlue Plus card, you'll actually earn six times the points on JetBlue purchases. This offer is actually the same. You'll earn double the points on restaurants and grocery stores regardless of the card that you have. Another difference is the bonus offer here. So with this card, if you spend $1,000 in your first 90 days, you'll get 10,000 bonus points. On the Plus card, you'll get 60,000 bonus points. And then with the plus card, you will also get 5,000 points on your anniversary date. For me, honestly, those benefits just didn't outweigh the cost of having an annual fee. So this card still works the best for me. I wouldn't consider upgrading to the card that has the annual fee. If you do the math and it turns out to work for you, that's great. But for me personally, it doesn't happen to work out. And for most of the people that I know, they would prefer to just have no annual fee. Another thing that I want to point out here, this is the only airline card that I have. So I'm going to show you a couple of options, but just know I'm not telling you to go out and get every single card that I'm showing you. I just want to make sure that you're making the most informed decision, so I'm going to show you a few options. Next, let's talk about United. So all of these cards are offered through Chase. I have a hotel credit card and a Disney card also offered through Chase, and I absolutely love them. I'll be talking about them a little bit later. But as far as the United card, this is the card that doesn't have an annual fee. It's their gateway card. They have an intro offer going on right now, 0% APR for your first 12 months. There's also a bonus offer on qualifying purchases within a certain time frame to earn 20,000 bonus miles. With this card, you earn double the miles on United purchases, gas stations, local transit, and commuting, and then a mile per dollar on all other purchases. So this is definitely a good card to start out with. There is also another card up here. I wanted to mention it. It does have an annual fee after your first year, but 
if you're weighing out the benefits of each card, this may actually be a good option for you. So with this, you'll get double the miles on United purchases, dining, and hotel stays. Plus, you'll get your first checked bag for free. So depending on how much you're traveling during the year, that may actually end up evening out and paying for itself with the annual fee. So that's something that you'll want to take into consideration. Now, a lot of these are going to start sounding the same, so I'm just going to breeze through Delta and American Airlines. So here we have the Delta Sky Miles American Express card. With this, if you spend $500 in your first three months, you'll get 10,000 bonus miles. You'll also earn two miles per dollar at restaurants, plus on takeout and delivery, and then two miles per dollar on Delta purchases. If you look at some of the other cards that do have an annual fee, there are some additional benefits, especially as far as the airline itself goes. You'll get your first check bag for free, priority boarding, things like that. Honestly, nothing that really stood out to me that would kind of drive me towards the card with the annual fee. But again, you have to weigh these benefits for yourself and see what you'll use and what you find good value out of. We'll jump right over to the American Airlines card. So this is through City. With this, you'll earn double miles at grocery stores. And then again, here they have the offer to earn 10,000 bonus miles. And with this one, you get a $50 statement credit. So again, the offers are pretty similar. It really just depends on which airline you're going to be traveling the most. I am not telling you to get all of these cards, really just make sure that you are doing your research and picking the right card for you. Now let's talk about hotel credit cards. I have two that are pulled up here from the two major brands and these are really the only two that I would recommend. So starting out here in Marriott Bonvoy, I have the bold card. This is the card of course with no annual fee. And right now they have a great offer going on. If you spend $1,000 on purchases in your first three months, you'll get 50,000 bonus points. The main selling point of this card is how you earn your points when you stay at Marriott Hotels. So you'll earn 14 times the points for every dollar spent at any hotel participating in Marriott Bonvoy. The main difference here is how you're going to earn points on this card versus the Boundless card. The only difference is up here at the top, on the bold card you'll earn 3 times the points, whereas the boundless card you earn 6 times the points. And then the only other difference here is how you earn points on other purchases. So for the bold card you earn a dollar per point on all other purchases that aren't travel related, whereas the boundless card you earn double the points. And in my opinion, I feel like if you're just starting out with a travel credit card or you're just starting to get into travel in general, this is a good place to start. You can always upgrade to the Boundless card if you feel like you need more benefits or that one would fit your needs better. And then jumping into the Hilton card, this one is pretty straightforward. This one doesn't have an annual fee. You'll earn seven times the points on purchases at participating hotels and resorts within the Hilton portfolio, five times the points on purchases at restaurants, supermarkets, and gas stations, and then three times the points on all other purchases. The other option here does have a $95 annual fee. And the main difference here is really just the points that you earn on Hilton hotels and at restaurants, supermarkets, and gas stations. And in my opinion, it's really just not worth it. So I would just go for the card without the annual fee, especially if you're not staying at Hilton hotels that often and you're just using this card day to day to build up points to stay at Hilton resorts. I think you can't go wrong with the card without the annual fee. Now maybe you want some more flexibility in the way that you're earning and spending your rewards dollars. So these next two cards are going to be for you. So we'll start out here with the Chase card. This is the one that I highly, highly recommend. This is the Chase Freedom Unlimited card if this is something that you're interested in earning and spending your rewards however you want. This one of course doesn't have an annual fee. Intro 0% APR for your first 15 months on purchases and balance transfers. You'll earn 5% cash back on travel purchased through Chase, 3% on dining, including takeout and drugstores, and 1.5% back on all other purchases. There's also a great bonus offer here that you can take advantage of. This is one that I highly, highly recommend. 
I'm not normally a fan of American Express cards, but I know some people do really like them and they do have some great benefits that come with their cards. So I do recommend this card if you're looking for more flexibility in your rewards. This is the Blue Cash Everyday card from American Express. They have a great intro offer going on right now, as well as 0% APR on purchases for your first 15 months. And then the cash back reward, so you'll earn 3% cash back on your first $6,000 of purchases per year at U.S. supermarkets. After that, you'll earn 1%, 2% back at U.S. gas stations, and then 1% back on all other purchases. So this is a really great card if you're looking for some more flexibility and you're a big fan of American Express. Now I saved this one for last because it's either going to be a major hit or a major miss for you. This is the Disney Visa Rewards card and I included this card because I think it's a great option to have if you want to go to Disney or you're currently traveling to Disney a lot. And the reason why I wanted to include this is because I wanted to point out the 0% APR for six months on Disney vacation packages. So I am so aware that Disney vacations can be so expensive. So that's why I think this is a really great option and can make booking a Disney vacation much more manageable. This is really great to have, especially if you're booking a trip at the last minute and want to have some additional time to pay that off, or if you just want to pay in equal installments over time, you have the flexibility to do that. I also really like the intro offer on this card. You'll get a $150 statement credit after you spend $500 on purchases in your first three months. You'll get 10% savings at shopdisney.com and select merchandise locations in Disneyland and Disney World when you use the card. And then you'll earn 1% back in Disney Rewards dollars on all of your purchases. So when you make a purchase, you'll get rewarded in Disney Rewards dollars and those can be cashed out for a Disney Rewards card, can be used very similar to a gift card. So I think this is a really great option if traveling to Disney is on your radar or you're currently traveling there. This is a great card to have. That is everything. I hope this video was helpful and I really hope that your head isn't exploding at this point. There's so many options out there and it can be so hard to figure out which credit card is right for you. But if you like this video, I have so much more information that I can share if you were interested in cards that do have an annual fee and what the benefits of those might be. I'd be happy to share that or anything else that you have questions about. I'd be happy to help. Let me know what you want to see and I will see you in the next one.